10 his last fight. Dokes the half inch reach advantage. Evander Holyfield 20 and 0 with 16 knockouts. His toughest test to date against Michael Dokes, the former WBA heavyweight champion. Dokes said he's going to come right out, look for the knockout. And Evander Holyfield says he's just going to apply pressure. The fact that this fight is for the WBC Continental America's title is almost irrelevant of much greater significance. The boxing future of two men at stake. Dokes looking to avoid fading into obscurity. Holyfield out to show the boxing world that he is Mike Tyson's next opponent. Well, they certainly have lived up to their billing. Very heavy shots to the body by Dokes. And Holyfield is responding two punches to one. Evander Holyfield in the blue trunks with the white trim. Michael Dokes in the white trunks. Oh, two good shots, but they were low by Dynamite Dokes. And Steele says keep them up. Dokes looking to go toe to toe from the outset. Oh, Holyfield standing right in front of him. Although Lou was screaming, turn him, turn him. Holyfield said he is not obsessed with KOing Dokes. He just wants to win. Dokes it keeps landing those very low punches. It's beginning to bother Holyfield, who keeps pulling his trucks up. Though Duva says the key word here for Evander Holyfield is respect, especially at the start. Holyfield has to go after Dokes early because Dokes intends to come out punching, and Dokes will figure, hey, he's just a light heavyweight. Well, it's in Dokes' favor if they're getting a punch out, and they are in a punch out. Holyfield's superior reflexes are evident right now, though. One thing that was supposed to happen was the fast hands of Dokes should neutralize the superior reflexes of Holyfield. That has not happened right now. Well, there's no denying the skills of these two fighters. Lou Duva told me this fight will come from the gut. Well, it's going to the gut because Dynamite is working hard. Dokes working hard on the body of Holyfield. Holyfield coming back with serious punches to the head. Now, Dokes spinning Holyfield around, but Richard Steele breaks him up. The odds on this fight began at 9-1 to one favoring Holyfield. This morning, it was 3.5-1. to one. Big left by Holyfield. Holyfield is honing in right on Dokes' uh, open uh, face, and he's landing solidly. Dokes, for his part, is trying to get down into the body to put some hurt on the much lighter Holyfield. Less than 30 seconds in the opening round, scheduled for 12. And Dokes suffering from the apparent low blow. And now it's Dokes who got a low blow. There's a timeout. There's going to be a timeout to recover. Now that's ironic because the entire first round had been low blows to Holyfield. But Holyfield, his punch was to an area where when the protector slides over, it hurts. It's hit right in what's called the groin area. He now has 18 seconds time to recover this timeout. When they come back, it's 18 seconds. He should be able to continue. He certainly will be able to continue for 18 seconds. Dokes takes a big deep breath, has blood coming from the lower lip. That continues. The words respect coming from the corner of Evander Holyfield. And he certainly has gotten that. Holyfield is just teeing off on Dokes' exposed face. Dokes trying to outspeed him, but can't. Oh, another low blow by Dokes. And that is it for round one. Action pack. Get beautiful out there. Second round. Okay. Oh, God said he's trying to quit on you. Get on the side. He's got a talk. Go ahead, George. All right. Now listen. Now the fight is the fight is on top now. Come on, Mike. Don't get hit. You get hit with the right hand. You got no reason to get hit with that right hand. Get underneath it. Come up with your left hook to the body. All right. Come on, Mike. All right, Mike. All right, baby. Don't let him back you up. You got to go forward on you. We'll take a look at the low blow by Holyfield. That certainly was south of the border. Now. They can call time, which they did. They have a normal amount of time. That could be a minute. That could be two minutes. That could be at the discretion of the referee. Certainly not longer than two minutes, at which time the fight either continues, he's disqualified, or he loses. 
Round two, scheduled for 12. Well, that first round lived up to everything both fighters told us they were going to do. Both tried to establish uh, superiority, both tried to get respect, and both landed low punches. And they come out with a furious exchange to begin the second. A shot at right that landed by Holyfield to the head of Dokes. Oh, and Dokes landed, might have been a low blow, a right by Holyfield and a left by Holyfield to the head. Now another right by Holyfield. Holyfield landing clean blows to the head of Dokes. Dokes concentrating on the body and leaving his head wide open. That first round was a blazer, and this is a corker opening up from the second round. Look at the body shots that Dokes is putting in. At 20 pounds more, he wants to wear out Holyfield. He wants to get him down off his horse, and he wants to pound him as the rounds progress. Evander Holyfield felt like a football linebacker. Trimming down to 208 for a more quickness against the 225-pound Michael Dokes. Holyfield actually looked like he was upset, angry at the low blows earlier. Dokes giving no motion whatsoever, standing right in front of Holyfield. Holyfield can take his shots, give angles, and not get hit in return. Holyfield looking to establish his left jab, which is probably his best weapon. Neither one of these men look like they expect to be here 12 rounds. Both of them are going for early knockouts here as they continue to zing very hard punches. Combination by Holyfield, but they didn't land. Holyfield trying to prove to the boxing world that he has knockout power. He didn't say publicly that he'd like to KO Michael Dokes, but you have to figure deep down inside, he would like to prove a point. Well, Dokes has got concrete in his chin, and he's got a huge heart. Nothing wrong with that. It's his legs south of the border that are in question, but he's been known to take some great shots by heavy punching heavyweights. Can Holyfield's shots be enough to stop Dokes? That's what we're going to find out. see if this is a low blow by Dokes. Indeed. That has been happening all during the first two rounds. Discombobulating uh, Mike uh, Evander Holyfield who's getting more and more exasperated by these blows and no warnings from Richard Steele. Round three scheduled for 12. The stakes are high tonight. But they're higher for Evander Holyfield. Both have a lot to gain, but Holyfield risking his status as Mike Tyson's ultimate opponent. Now for once, all of a sudden, Dunks trying to out-jab Holyfield. Somebody's mouthpiece just fell out. It's Dunks. It's Dunks' mouthpiece. Dunks pouring in, going to the body. Holyfield. His quickness able to elude those punches. Holyfield smiles at Dope, saying, I'm okay. You didn't hurt me. But those punches that land to the arms and body, you're going to be able to tell the effect of those in another few rounds. He's now landing flush to the face as Dope's. Back comes Holyfield with some good shots to the head. Oh, a crisp right uppercut by Holyfield. Dope's without the mouthpiece. Dope's has opened up differently this round, going to the head. Get 
with this fight goes beyond four or five rounds, stamina will begin to play a role. Well, that's what Dokes is counting on with his early attack. Hard attack to the head of Holyfield, who's not fighting back. He's standing still, taking these shots from Dokes, and that can't be good, folks. Holyfield looks a bit frustrated. Not only frustrated, he looks tired and he looks a little hurt. He's been tagged. He has been rocked by Michael Dokes. Here the third. Dokes switching to the head has surprised Holyfield, who's taking big shots. Combination by Dokes. Big punishment by Dokes on Holyfield, who doesn't seem to come back with his own attack. That left was a grazing punch by Dokes. But it was a great thought. A left hook just as Holyfield came in. If he caught him, he would have been on the seat of his pants. Showing a lot of heart. That's what you're seeing. All the heart in the world is coming out of Dukes as he wants to run around and begin to establish his mastery. Michael Dukes fighting most of this round without the mouthpiece. There was a great crush by Holyfield that landed. Now it's Holyfield on the attack, and now it's Dukes taking a breather. Dukes tiring here towards the end of round three. He's put in a very heavy, heavy round of punching. He should post the rest of the round. I'm sure he will. Apparently a winning round for Michael Dokes. Final seconds, round three. The frantic action reaches on. And these guys did. These guys did. Now listen. Now look. Go to the body. Go to the body. Now listen, don't be, what are you getting hit with the punches for? You got no business getting with the punches. Now go to that body, you understand? Right? Now look, take your time. Don't throw yourself away, you understand? But stay close and punch. Amen. Trust me, let your hands go and leave me. Well, take a look at the flurry from round three. Well, this was the attack that Evander finally launched only after being pummeled for the first two and a half minutes by Dokes, who came out, switched to the head, and was landing clean shots to the head of a bewildered Evander Holyfield. I don't think he has had this kind of a test in many, many fights, and he is getting a little frustrated. Certainly not as a heavyweight. 91-year-young Marty Pops Cohn has never taken a plug nickel from Michael Dokes. He didn't have to. He owned a coal mine and sold it. He doesn't need Doak's money. Doak says he loves Marty Cohn more than anyone else in the world, with the exception of his mom. Doak's does not seem to be affected by the punches of Evander Holyfield as we enter round four. Well, that's been uh, what we're here to prove. Has Holyfield got a heavyweight punch? He's certainly been landing shots that would have hurt a lesser opponent than Michael Doak. Oh, like those right there. Two or three jabs and a beautiful right hand. But back comes Dokes with that patented body attack. A lot of punches south of the border. Well, so far, this fight living up to reputation, it has been explosive. Dokes just doesn't pardon at Holyfield. Anytime he gets in close, he gets a body shot for his trouble. Holyfield opens his round as he closes the first and second, doing most of the leading. As Dokes has chosen right now to take another breather, could be this toll is getting to Dokes as well. Go back to the jab, says the Holyfield corner. And the jab gets in. He created jabs. Dokes missed his. Holyfield did not. Now Holyfield goes to the body. Holyfield boxing much better while he's on the attack and initiating the action. He's faster than Dokes, but when Dokes starts, then it's a different ball game. Holyfield appears confused and flustered. It appears as if Holyfield has now gone to more finesse, more footwork. He's bouncing around a lot more now. I, went, I think he wants to take a breather from all of this hot and heavy in the trenches action. And that's the way to do it. Bounce around. He's got young legs. He can do it. You notice that Dokes is nailed to the canvas. He does not bounce around. He just stands still. Alex 
say this crowd is split in terms of the popularity for these two fighters. Right down the middle. I think both the favorites of the crowd and certainly sentimental favoritism for Michael Brooks, who has come back from sheer hell to be a contender for the title. Two great stories. The former Olympian of the Blue Trunks, Evander Holyfield, one of boxing's consummate gentlemen out of the ring against a man who battled back from a severe cocaine addiction, Michael Dokes, who lost to Jerry Cozzi, his only defeat, admittedly under the influence of cocaine. And then he straightened his life out, went to drug rehab, and he is 8-0 since the comeback. Will follow Evander Holyfield, the challenger for this Continental America's heavyweight title. Going and hit this guy in the body a lot. Now, look, now don't let him out hustle you on the inside. Just keep your hands moving, right? And his manager, Ken Sanders, who is also known as the chief executive officer for Team Holyfield. And a big, deep breath from Mr. Sanders. good defense. When you catch one, just come back to the body. All kinds of celebrities in the crowd tonight here at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. A pair of daredevils, Evil Knievel and his son, Robbie. Robbie will attempt to jump the fountains in front of Caesar's Palace on his motorcycle, a feat his father tried in 67, and uh, rearranged practically every bone in his body. It'll be televised as a pay-per-view special live on April 14th. Round five, it's scheduled for 12. It's been a good one. Dokes re-establishing his mastery in that, uh, in, a, in that last round. I'm sorry, not Dokes, Evander Holyfield re-establishing his mastery by, a, again, a very slim margin as Dokes had to rest after that big, big round he had in the third. This has got to be, without question, Holyfield's most difficult test since he fought Dwight Muhammad Kawi in the first of those two. and what many consider the fight of the year. Richard Steele, the third man of the ring. He was wincing. He was trying to 
clear his head and of course with the stamina of youth and resiliency he came back but he was not the same fighter for the rest of that round. Dokes doesn't have the spring in his legs that he had as a young man or else he would have been pushing Holyfield into the ropes and taking advantage from the waist up it's the old Dokes and from the waist down it's old man time. Action from later in that fifth round. Some crunching blows to the ribs by Dokes. Scheduled for 12. Dokes really being exhorted by his corner, Bill Slayton, Sterling McPherson. Dokes in the right, Holyfield in the blue, Holyfield doubling up on the jab, oh. and then the right. No question, this corner sent him out to win this round. They said, hey, you blew that last one. If not the fight, Holyfield pressing the attack. What singing punches from Holyfield right at the opening bell and landing on Dokes, but back comes Dokes. His corner doesn't want to see this fight get close, but it is close. I have it 48 to 47, favor of Evander Holyfield. Again, I caution you quite unofficially. However, just when Holyfield looks like he's going to pull it out, back comes Dokes with a big round. Right now, it's Holyfield that's on top of this round. The Dokes has said on repeated occasions he does not want this fight to fall into the hands of the judges because he feels he's the bad boy of Las Vegas. He feels the judges here don't like him.
26 of Vander Holyfield ahead by two points, quite unofficially. Round seven, scheduled for 12. Blood on the trunks, the white Somebody trunks of hit. Michael Dutch, very evident. It's from above his left eye. Oh, and there goes the mouthpiece of Dukes again. Holy man trying to take advantage. But Dukes is the man punching. Now, Dukes was severely hurt. He's fighting back on guts now. He was severely hurt. If Holyfield can mount this attack, he may end this now. Dukes will not let Holyfield mount a barrage. That was just pure heart on the part of Dukes. He was severely hurt. He's still hurt. Combination by Holyfield to the face of Dokes. Now Dokes comes back with a no home, no home. combination. And now there's some blood around the left eye of Holyfield. I don't know if that Dokes blood, though. No, it's been puffing up. It's been puffing up, and it may start to crack up a little bit. It is not significant at this time. But Dokes is still there, tired as he is, and whipped as he is this round. He is still there, and he's got enough guts to uh, on, hide his feeling out. from uh, Holyfield. There he is, coming back with more. There's nothing on those punches, but he is punching, making Holyfield stop. Dokes is not favored, even though he's the champion. But he and his manager, Marty Cohen, are used to the long odds. Cut on the left eyebrow of Time. Uh, Michael Come on. Dokes, and that may be what they're uh, looking for now. these punches that Holyfield is putting his whole body, turning his whole body into the punch just like they teach you to do and it's landing. Look at that shot to the body of Dokes. And Dokes remember, fights back. He's not just that. Look at that shot. That's enough to drop anybody. And a hook comes back in another right hand. That's enough to drop people, folks. Those are heavyweight punches from big guys winding up. We head into round eight, scheduled for 12. Steve Alvin of the Fight Doctor, Ferdy Pacheco in Las Vegas. This has been a monstrous battle. Holyfield in the blue, Dokes in the white. So Dokes is now battling back from a uh, point. Oh, look at Dokes go. Michael Dokes landing to the head of Holyfield. Opening up the round to get a little respect from Holyfield and break up his attack. Not wanting to stand there from those and receive more cannon 
Shot that's he opened up in flurries. That, that puts Evander in a different mood. And Dokes was hidden in retreat. Way out. Let's go. Protect yourself Michael at all time. predicted this would be a war, and it's coming to fruition. He's fighting under disadvantages now. First, he has one point off. Second, he has got um, low blows, which will accumulate to the point where another point can be taken off with, with no trouble. Then he's getting pummeled by Holyfield. And last but not least, he's got a cut over the eye. A lot of stuff to worry about while you're trying to take care of this young kid. Yet somehow surviving it all. Beautiful, beautiful uppercuts by Holyfield with no effect. Again, with that big round by Evander Holyfield, I have him ahead 68 to 65. Again, unofficially, this has been a ding-dong battle. Remember, one of those rounds could easily be a 10-8 round because they took a point away from Dokes. Now, Michael Dokes on the attack. Dokes with a left, but Holyfield may have blocked it. Dokes senses something now, perhaps. Yeah, Holyfield's not in the best shape of his life just now. Holyfield may be in some trouble. Every time he gets him on the ropes, that superior weight, that pulling and pushing, takes oh, right, right hand. A twisting right by Dunks, a combination, but now Holyfield comes back with a lift. Holyfield coming back with everything he's got. A lot of guts to Holyfield because he's been hammered. He's throwing everything in those punches. seem possible the two heavyweights could pound each other this way without effect it's dope since beginning to wear out but he's had a big lead in this round contention and uh, barring a knockout 
at the rate they're going, either one or both could be lined up for Dyson. Past the midway point, round nine. In the meantime, we have had a peaceful round, if you can call it. If you can call this mayhem peaceful, this has been a peaceful round compared to those because they had to rest. They have to rest. Perhaps the fighters are just looking for a second win to keep it going. Now Holyfield spins Dokes around. You notice there has been precious few clinches. Oh, big, big breath from Dokes, like saying, whoa, how much longer to the end of this round? The cut taken good care of in the corner of Dokes is not a factor. Although it's bleeding, it is not a factor. Good job by Tommy Gallagher. Both men are just wiling away this round. Which might mean we ain't seen nothing yet. From 10 through 12. Under 30 seconds in the ninth. The right by Holyfield, but didn't seem to bother Dokes that much. Dokes had just landed a couple of good shots himself. So it sort of neutralized each other. And that is it for the ninth round. Relatively speaking, they cruised through that round. I think they had to rest. That's called a convalescent round. Because both guys were so exhausted from the feverish uh, pace of the eighth round that they had to take it easy, particularly Dokes, who seems to be wearing out on a faster clip than the younger and better conditioned uh, Evander Holyfield. But I'm impressed again. I have to say it again. I cannot begin to tell you that there was so much doubt about the heart of Holyfield. He had all these easy fights. Yeah, what happens when he gets in with a tough guy and he goes to round six, seven, and eight? Well, as far as I can see, what's happening is we've proved once and for all that Evander Holyfield has got a truckload of guts. I mean, he hangs in there. He doesn't quit, and he's getting hammered. On to round 10, and these next three should be crucial. And here we go. Some thunderous shots in this fight. Landed by both fighters. Holyfield in the blue. Dokes in the white. There's another right by Holyfield that landed. And Dokes comes right back. No doubt about it. Got his gas back in the tank and ready to go. He's put it in gear because he came out with solid punching. Dokes is still in slow motion. He is not eager to press forward against a bouncing Holyfield. Again, this somewhat reminiscent of the Holyfield White Muhammad Kawi fight when Holyfield stopped the former light heavyweight and cruiserweight champ in the fourth round. The legs, the legs, the weary legs of Michael Dokes can't get him there. They just can't get him into punching range. And fight fans all over the world enjoying this action, not only here in the United States, but this broadcast going to 16 different foreign lands, like England, France, Spain, Japan, Venezuela, Australia, Austria, South Africa, Holland, Thailand, Panama, and on and on. Dokes just wants to invite Holyfield to come into his parlor and stand still to punch there because he just doesn't have the legs to get away from him or to get to him. It's got to be Holyfield's call to come in. Oh, what a shot! Dokes in trouble! Dokes in big trouble! Michael Dokes staggered! But he's, fighting back, he's still shape. And there he goes into the ropes. Holyfield looks to finish him off. Richard Steele steps in, and Dokes coming towards us. He's down. He's out. He's out. It's over. It's all over, says Richard Steele. Evander Holyfield has won it here in the 10th round. And that was inevitable, but what a fight Michael Dukes put up. It just seemed like he couldn't keep taking those heavy punish punishing blows. Now with his legs gone, he had no way to absorb the punishment except fully on his face. And of course, he went down along the ropes. Had he not fallen, he would have definitely been counted out. And the referee was definitely, had he not counted him out, would have stopped the fight. Dukes was not in any condition to go on. So, Holyfield answers quite a few questions. Has he got guts? You bet. Can he punch? You bet. And has he got the courage to stay in there with a guy who's got the 
will call Michael Dope. You bet, you bet, you bet. Two courageous fighters being saluted here by this capacity crowd at Caesars Palace. Michael Dokes came out here in the tent by Evander Holyfield, who is now 3-0 as a heavyweight and proving that he does have knockout power. Here's the setup punch. It's coming up. And that's the one that did the damage. It's sort of a left uppercut and a cross between an uppercut and a hook, and it was all over for Dokes. It was just window dressing after that. But even so, even so, Dokes fought back. I mean, where in that massive chest cavity can you find a heart as big as Dokes? Even so, he was fighting back. No legs to keep him up. Nothing to absorb the punch, and he was finished. You see him? He's gone. And, of course, needless to say, the referee over in a minute, so was his corner. No problem stopping the fight. Watch this shot. That is just absolutely a beautiful hook. The effect had been building up all night long as Holyfield rained punch after punch on the durable Dokes, who took a long time in leaving. A dramatic conclusion to an incredible fight. And I have to come back with the thought, Steve, that off of this fight, Dokes has lost nothing. He has gained stature as an opponent. If he goes back and wins a couple of good fights, he is in, in position to fight Tyson. I know that sounds ridiculous when a guy gets knocked out, but it's not, given the dearth of heavyweights. Chuck Hall in the center of the ring has the official word. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, one minute, 41 seconds. On the 10th round, the winner by a TKO and new Continental America.